en Aurea. Yes, yes, people. What's going on? Welcome back to Saeed TV. And we are live for another Manchester United update. And we have with me today Ben Jacobs. Ben, how are you? Everything okay? I'm good, Saeed. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. A little bit, um, I would say, concerned. But we're here hopefully to clear everything up. And hopefully you can give us a good insight as to what's happening with my United in a minute. Um but it was um, latest developments yesterday was um, very very intriguing, wasn't it? We um, we got the news just before the, the Man City Arsenal game. I came out randomly at a, at a time where I don't think many people expected. Um, but yeah, tell us a bit about what has happened, and especially with Sir Jim Radcliffe, if you can, please. Well, let's start with Sir Jim Radcliffe. The option, and it is only one option could be to take a controlling stake rather than all 69%. And from Ratcliffe's perspective, this has always been about winning, clearly, but having a control in Manchester United, which he can do in two ways. First of all, by buying out the Glazers, or second of all, by buying out a majority stake. And if Joel and Avram are intent on staying, then this option allows for Ratcliffe to be the majority owner and still get something out of the process. So you can understand why that type of offer might be appealing. But we have to be very clear here. There's a lot of games going on. Nothing has been tabled yet. And there's nothing stopping Sir Jim Ratcliffe valuing the football club and then saying it's dealer's choice. You can either sell all 69% at that valuation or at the same valuation you can surrender a controlling stake and that may allow for Joel and Avram to stay. The other thing that we should point out is that when Joel and Avram have considered buying out their siblings, they would have under that scenario when there was the Apollo deal on the table, had the opportunity to remain as the controlling owners. And actually, had they proceeded, then in buying out their siblings, they would have had even more control over the football club. If they retain around 20%, 
then it becomes an investment, but they won't have the say or the control. So they would remain in a very different dynamic. And Radcliffe would also have to consider how much bad PR would be generated from this kind of offer as well. So I want to make one thing very clear. This is not what Sir Jim Radcliffe is going to do. And sources close to Radcliffe are absolutely clear now. They're coy, as I reported a few days ago. They're under NDA. They're not confirming a singular structure. So this is a possibility, but that's not to say that it will be the offer or the only offer that the Radcliffe group table on Friday. And because there's games going on, putting something like this out there helps Ratcliffe understand in many ways what the Glazers' intentions might be. And April the 28th and beyond is all about determining whether or not all six siblings have unity and want to leave or whether two of them would still like to stay. Because from Sheikh Jassim's point of view, if the end game of Joel and Avram, come what may, is to either stay or do no sale because they're not happy with the valuation, then the 9-2 foundation doesn't stand a chance. If all six Glazers are determined sellers, then whatever Ratcliffe proposes is going to be quite difficult, providing Jassim meets the valuation. And if he's the highest bidder and doesn't meet the valuation, then nothing will get done anyway. So Ratcliffe's in a very difficult position here which is why I think tactically he has to at least look at all these different options. In a straight head-to-head -head against Sheikh Jassim, he's highly unlikely to put down a higher number. And if all 69% of the shares go and the Glazers fully depart Manchester United, then ultimately they're going to accept the highest price. So Ratcliffe has to outbid Jassim. But if he creates a different structure so as to present a choice of stay versus Jassim's offer, which is go, then Joel and Avram have got a slightly different decision to make. And the last thing I think that's worth pointing out is that we would need to understand if the option is tabled that keeps Joel and Avram in a minority sense, whether that is permanent or laddered. So permanent would see a different dynamic where Radcliffe controls the club but Joel and Avram are there with around 20%. Mm. Laddered would see Radcliffe come in now, but have a either option or obligation to take the other 20% somewhere further down the line. And what's interesting about that, and I won't go into too much detail because there's lots of variables here. It would all depend on how it's negotiated. But mm. one option is that if you are contractually obligated to buy the other 20 or so percent somewhere further down the line, it could be done at a variable rate, which means that if Joel and Avram believe the value of the club is going to go up, that 20% would be worth a lot more than if that 20% was bought now. So people will be asking, if Jassim values the club higher or bids higher, how can Joel and Avram commit to Radcliffe and sell over 50% at a lower number ratioed compared to Jassim, and then stay because it's a bad deal for Manchester United. But Joel and Avram may argue there's not that much difference between Jassim and Ratcliffe. So we're going to sell a controlling state now. And then by the time that other 20% is cashed in, we're yeah. going to get even more for it. And that yeah. could be part of the line of thinking as well. So there's a lot of moving parts here. But again, I want to reiterate to Manchester United fans, there will be no clarity until the bid is placed as to whether this is the Radcliffe structure or just a Radcliffe option. And there's a big difference between those two. And if you're Radcliffe, you're quite smart to keep your options open. But still, the Jassim side are confident that theirs is the cleanest transaction mm -hmm. and they believe that they will bid the highest number for the sixty nine percent available in this process, mm. do you think the the that you know Jim Ratcliffe did that because he knew about um, you know Sheikh Jassim's power and his and his kind of ability to have the highest bid? Do you think it was a smart move considering that the fans do want a wholesale? They don't want a part sale. They don't want the glazes there. Do you think it was a it was a clever move because at the end of the day, the fa I feel like for me, 
as a Man United fan now, it's a bit tainted now because he's trying to make a deal with the Glazers. Do you think that was a smart move to make? Or is this just business? Is this just what the reality is? And fans have to understand that he has to take this option. I think from a PR point of view, it's a dreadful move to make. But sometimes when you know you're going to do something unpopular, you perhaps want it out there before. But to reiterate once again, those close to Ratcliffe are saying quite adamantly when approached that under NDA, they will not confirm any kind of structure or bid at this stage. So it's not like the Radcliffe side are issuing a bunch of statements like they did when they first entered the process saying this is our new plan. They've always used the word majority. And technically, if they've pivoted from 69% majority to 51% majority, it's still a majority. So their tactic is still the same in terms of wanting control. I think that anything with the Glazers, whether there's 1% Glazers, whether there's 20% Glazers or whether there's majority Glazers is going to be terribly received by the fan base. So Jim Ratcliffe under this option, if, and it is still an if he tables it, will have a bit of a PR fight on his hands because you can have all of the most ambitious plans in the world. You can speak about a new era, but it isn't 100% a new era if two of the Glazers still remain And on top of that, if you go back to the original statement from Sir Jim Ratcliffe, it was all about restoring the glory days. It was all about improving the club. But to come in with two of the Glazers still there, there will be an element of business as usual, albeit a different dynamic. And we still need to understand whether two Glazers would be prepared to stay in a minority manner as well. But I think where it's smart from Sir Jim Ratcliffe, even though there'll be outrage, even though the fans are unhappy, yes. once again, and the only reason why I'm repeating it like a broken record is because people may be joining at different times. Important to note, this is not what the Ratcliffe group are confirming. They're under NDA. And even if they were to present this, it can be one of many options. So as long as your valuation is consistent for the whole club, whether you want 1%, 51%, 69%, you ratio the valuation to the percentage that you bid for. So Mm -hmm. technically you could say, listen, we're prepared to buy 1%, 5%, 10%, 50%, 51%, 69%. And for each of those percentages, our valuation is X. And that's our bid. Up to you to decide what direction you want. And in that respect, it is quite smart. Now, in a traditional takeover, you would fix upon one structure. But they're in the point of deliberation and there's tactics at play here. And the smartness comes from the fact that if it's Jasson versus Ratcliffe for 69% of the Glazers shares, Ratcliffe is the stalking horse. But if it is Jasson for an outright takeover with the Glazers leaving and Ratcliffe has an option that plays upon that sentiment and that desire for Joel and Avram to stay, then as the Glazers deliberate, They may say, you know what, there's not much between the valuations here. We can still sell our 20% at a later point. We can still put a PR spin on it and say we're outgoing, but just not in one swoop. And from Radcliffe's point of view, because he knows Jasim won't revert to this tactic, he can maybe try and force a situation where he's the only bidder left because Radcliffe's not going to adapt in any way other than control. He's not going to be minority, but he is going to be flexible and say, I'll take control in any way you'll give it to me. Whereas Jasim is not going to adapt at all. It's an all or nothing bit. So maybe this is a bit of gamesmanship. Maybe this is a way of showing the hand from Ratcliffe's perspective, or maybe it won't even materialize. And it's all just games and competitive tension, which is why I would be very cautious because we're going to see a lot of outrage. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of vocalization from Manchester United fans in the next 24 hours protesting against the Glazers. I'm sure that Jim Ratcliffe is not going to be as well received if this is the direction of travel. But we have to be very careful as journalists because there's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of changing approaches. There's a lot of understanding going on because these are final offers as to what the Glazers' position is and what a rival's position is. And even though as a journalist, I would love to come on and say, I know all the answers. I'm not a mind reader. So at this point, I would urge caution 
to wait 24 hours so we don't speculate over what might be tabled, even though what might be tabled is legitimate. Yeah. And actually, we wait for what is tabled so we can take the games element, which is normal, out of the equation and then start looking at the situation based upon what is on the table, not what might be on the table. Mm. I, I hear that. I absolutely hear that. I think it's always good to kind of look at it and analyse it properly rather than having a gun-go gun, gun go approach on it. I think ultimately, though, where I think a lot of United fans will be confused is 24 hours before the deadline, or let's say 48 hours before the deadline, this happens. And it's almost a case of, hmm, that's a bit... You know, it's a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit of a risky move. You're doing this right now when we're kind of looking at that date as a full move and a full sale. That's the only thing where the fan base, I think, are a bit confusion because they always kind of believe that Jim Rackett would have a full sale, and he could do in the end of the day. Like you said, there are two options. I think that's where the confusion is, and I think ultimately it's going to be a manic 24 hours now. What? How do you think it will be behind the scenes right now? Where would you kind of like look to it? Think you know what? What's, what's going on right now behind the scenes? It just depends on the groups, really. If we start with those bidding, I think they're all quite calm because they've had plenty of time now to do due diligence and they know that the deadline isn't that significant when you have three rounds of bidding. So some may consider under competitive tension going up. Some will have had questions and that due diligence will impact what their final offer is. But they know the ballpark and they will know privately the structure. And I would say that as of last week, they probably could have tabled offers, but there's a process. And you might have also questions coming from the sellers to the buyers as well. So a lot of it's just about getting everything in order and then waiting for an almost arbitrary deadline now to hit send and you don't want to send too early and we might see some games in terms of delaying mm. because one group might want to understand potentially what another group has done and we might get some withdrawals as well which we saw within the Chelsea process too that's another thing to look out for that if a group feels that it's a lost cause or that they no longer want to bid because they've done their due diligence and they don't see any more value. There's always the possibility that they will pull out and not complete the process as well. So these are the things to look out for. But I think that those looking to buy the football club are quite calm. They're just waiting for this process to be over and they're not having to scramble around. And I know that we've seen some stories as well about potentially the selling side, asking more questions about things like proof of funds, but again, my understanding remains that these type of requests have been there since day one. Yes. So the first time that indicative offers were made, the groups had to attach a proof of funds. And if you're proving your funds, then you're showing improving your funds, not just that you've got a bunch of money in a bank account, but throughout the process, you are also explaining the source of the funds as well. And then later in the process, as you do your due diligence, you also have to gather information about where your money is coming from and the makeup of your group. But that's preemptive because you're going to have to go through an owners and directors test. So even though this may alarm certain sections of the Manchester United fan base as if at the last minute people are putting scrutiny on where the money is coming from, this has been the case throughout the process and it's normal and actually, it's positive in many ways, because if they're asking these questions, it suggests that everybody understands that they might have to satisfy UEFA and do an owners and directors test sooner rather than later. And should that be the case, then it's actually an indication that things are going to move relatively quickly. So I would be staggered if those who are close to the selling process don't already understand who's in the groups and where the funds are coming from, because you simply can't put people through to this stage of the process without mm. seeing that proof of funds and understanding the makeups of the groups. So publicly, there's still those questions to be asked. But privately, I think that everybody connected with the process will be far more satisfied with the makeup of the groups and where the funds are coming from. Otherwise, they wouldn't be proceeding in this manner. There is that added element, of course, of a more robust incoming owners and directors test and also the independent regulator. But none of this has come into force at this stage. So the Manchester mm, yeah, United takeover is going to be ahead of that type of process. What it means is that retrospectively, 
a incumbent director could be retested or under scrutiny. So if you're Manchester United, you'll definitely want to do your due diligence to make sure you don't clear something now that when the rules change is going to put a group or an individual in a more awkward position. But it's really a lot of headlines and commotion, but there's a calmness on the side of the buying groups, at least sources close to them that I'm talking to. And then from the perspective of the seller and specifically Rain Group, they don't know what they're receiving at this point. Nobody's going to Rain Group two days out and saying, listen, this is what we're tabling. What do you think? Is it going to be a good offer? Is it going to be a bad offer? So they're at this stage a little bit more in the dark until Friday. And then on Friday, we're going to learn two things. One is have the Glazers already pre-decided. Do they know what they're doing? Is there unity? And is this third bidding round just about competitive tension? But actually, after the second round, they knew the direction of travel. And this is an extra step to get the due diligence in place because it helps speed up the process, but also to see if they can squeeze out a bit more money. And that is ultimately normal and competitive tension. Or are they undecided? And is there no family unity between the six? And does it actually need consideration of the offers depending on what they are. And that's when they might discuss Ratcliffe's two options, if two options are tabled, or that's when they may look at the Jassim valuation and say, okay, we wanted X, it's below it, but it's still a good offer. Are we going to accept it? Or are we going to delay? Or are we going to have a no sale? So that's the key thing in all of this. If the Glazers have pre-decided, then it's all games and it will move very quickly and they'll show their true hand by early May. If there is no unity and they haven't yet got an offer that they love, then they'll require discussion and consideration. And it might add a few more days to the process to get to the next step. So the quicker it moves, the more likely it is that all along the Glazers have known exactly what they plan on doing. Mm. I think that's the key point there, the consideration I think because there's a lot in the family and there's a lot of people involved, there's a lot, there's a lot more money to maybe kind of go around. Mm-hmm. And obviously, obviously, then you would see maybe an element of greed. But I think that's the worry for United fans. We've got a very big summer. We've got to think about transfer targets. We've got to think about the, the manager maybe wanting early recruitment. You know, so this has to really happen. We're, we're now approaching May, you know, and this is the end of the season. You know, for, so for, for, for you to kind of maybe say that if they do consider it, you know, who's to say that they might not? you know, might add another deadline to this. I say, you know what, we're going to take another time to add another deadline. Because at the minute, it was a first deadline, then it was a second deadline. I mean, this could go on. Is that that the fear? Or do you still believe that it will be a process where they will do their due diligence correctly? No, this will be the final offer, barring anything totally unexpected, like a new bidder coming into the mix to complicate things the third stage can't necessarily be seen as a delay either because it's transactionally backwards. They've asked for the due diligence to be done almost in its entirety before any preferred bidder or exclusive period. And that means that if the Glazers accept something, the situation will allow for a signing of a heads of terms very quickly. And as a consequence, even though the picking of a group is behind at least in Manchester United's fans' eyes, the due diligence is ahead, which is arguably more significant. And leaving a lot of groups in the race creates competitive tension. But what would delay it is if either Manchester United was not a publicly listed company or the due diligence was not done in advance. So before this deadline, there's been a due diligence deadline to ask any final questions. And because Manchester United is a publicly listed company, the groups have been able to establish what they believe is an accurate valuation relatively quickly. So the delay, should there be one beyond here, will not necessarily be in this process. It would only be down to satisfying UEFA and the Premier League, which should, in theory, be box ticks. But again, we cannot say that categorically until we know the exact makeup of the groups and the exact source of all the different fundings because Ineos still have Nice and Sheikh Jassim says he's a private individual 
and the 92 Foundation has no connection to the royals or to the government. There's nothing wrong in theory if there is a connection, but it's all about who is in control of the club. And the Premier League have to assess not just the listed directors, but also look at any potential shadow influence, which was a big problem and delayed the Newcastle United takeover. And I think that if it's Jassim, people are worried that somehow it's going to drag on. But what I would say is with Newcastle United, there was a piracy backdrop, which we won't get into on this broadcast. But the Premier League had a personal issue with the Saudi Arabian government. They basically said the Saudi Arabian government have stolen our rights on a pirate network because they don't want to air Qatar's official output because there was politics between Saudi Arabia and Qatar. Then when PIF came calling, they said, hang on a minute you're the Saudi Arabian government. So if the Saudi Arabian government stole our rights, why should we approve a takeover to a group connected to people that we believe are thieves? And then of course, PIF said, we're not legally connected. They've got no influence. And eventually, lo and behold, piracy resolved itself. The politics resolved itself and the takeover suddenly got approved. So I don't think we can look at Newcastle and say, just because PIF has Mohammed bin Salman as a chair, and there's all kinds of human rights allegations, it means that people are going to say the Emir of Qatar, and again, potential allegations in that sphere, and therefore there's going to be a big issue with the Premier League, because the Premier League do not have that same dynamic as they did with Newcastle United. And by all accounts, talking to sources at the Premier League, and based on what we know at the moment with the makeup of the 9-2 Foundation, Sheikh Jassim will pass the Premier League owners and directors test. But it is important to stress, you have the process, which could come to a head in May before the transfer window opens. And then you have all of the other elements of the deal, which may take some time. And for Jassim as well, remember, he wants 100% of the club. So he has to take the 69, which is all that's available in this process. And then he has to start that process of delisting all the public shares to get to 100%, which also takes a little bit of time. So we wait and see whether he takes 69 and then starts that process or whether he tries to do everything at once, which will be, again, something that adds a few weeks to the process. So if it all goes according to track, it's still very possible that a new owner, if they're outright, will be in before the transfer window opens, but it's definitely getting tighter and tighter by the day. Yes. And that's a, that's and that's a key thing. Uh, I've got one more question as well. Um, explain to me the kind of deadline approach as to as to what. Do you reckon there'll be last minute games before the deadline? Any t- twists and turns? Any predictions? Have you got any sort of um, early predictions for tomorrow uh, to, to let the people know that could happen in the late kind of coming hours? It feels like a transfer window, but you know, <laughs> it is this. It's just a new kind of ownership transfer window, isn't it? Well, I think tomorrow will be a transfer window-like feel, but without an actual signing. So don't be surprised if it's a relative anti-climax in the sense that there isn't really an expectation that Manchester United will announce anything at 10pm on the 28th. And there isn't an expectation that too much intel will become apparent in the minutes or hours afterwards. There is a possibility that the movement towards gamesmanship that we see is like with the second round where there's an extension asked for by a couple of days, which would in all likelihood be tactical for either Ratcliffe or Jassim to try and be the last one to bid so they can get a sense of maybe the direction that their rival has moved in. But I come back to what I said before. If the Glazers have pre-decided who they want, and this is all just a big game to get the highest possible number, things will move and be decided very quickly. If the Glazers haven't decided fans are going to have to be a bit more patient. But it's likely on the 28th that we'll get some kind of confirmation, whether or not that's public. I doubt it in terms of statements, but we as journalists have a responsibility. It's our job to dig. And I would be relatively confident in establishing who has bid and who hasn't bid. And that may be significant. And we may get more information as to the nature of the bid. We may get more steer as to the value of the bid as well in the 24 to 48 hours that follow the deadline. So these are all things to look out for. But I would 
urge fans, particularly those panicking at the moment, to be patient and not get sucked into scaremongering or headlines in the build-up because what is going to happen is pretty predictable. Jassim will bid, Ratcliffe will bid, Carlisle will bid and Elliot will bid. And there may be some others as well still in the mix. And as I've said many times, a minority investor is not the most likely scenario at this point. Preferred equity, which is slightly different, and that's Carlisle's bid, is interesting because it helps the Glazers do the opposite of Ratcliffe in the sense that they basically, and this is very simple terms, they get cash to buy out their siblings. And they use that cash to buy out their siblings. And in return, Carlisle get preferred equity, which they can cash in dividends, but also it's an investment over time. But the Glazers would still have control, two of them anyway, of the football club. Whereas under the Ratcliffe option, and I stress option, not offer, yeah. they would become a minority. But the downside of Carlisle is who on earth is investing in the football club? So that would be the Glazers staying out of pure... I would call it greed. And where are they then going to find the money to invest in the football club because they're using that capital to buy out their siblings? So to me, that doesn't make a whole bunch of sense to the football club, but the Glazers may say that's an option we would still like to explore. But I still think the more likely option is this, what I've been terming for a while now as outright but now, because we don't know whether Sir Jim Ratcliffe is going to go for outright or 69% or controlling, we now have to just adjust that slightly and say the most likely scenario is either a full or controlling sale or a no sale. And then beneath that, minority investment. And no sale would entail effectively the Glazers saying, we haven't hit a valuation, which is still the most important thing in all of this. So we're going to put the club on the market at a later date. And they may have to wait a year or two or even beyond. So this is what gives the outright bidders or Ratcliffe, if he goes down the line of a controlling stake, some confidence because they believe that now is the time to sell. And if they miss this opportunity, then a whole bunch of suitors walk away very frustrated with the process and a lot of people believe it's been a massive waste of time. And there'll be so much fan backlash and outrage that that's not a scenario that's going to sit well. And it's not a scenario that is going to sit well with the stock market price either. So there's still that confidence from Jasim. And obviously, from Ratcliffe's perspective, they're being very coy about what their bid is and what their structure is. But I would say at this stage, it is still that outright or controlling sale that is the most likely scenario. And if it's not that, it's because no one's hit the valuation. So then it becomes no sale, which is a terrible scenario all round. And then I still haven't heard from sources a preferred equity or minority pitch that makes a whole lot of sense to the football club. But we'll have to wait and see. It yeah. will be full of some surprise. It will be full of some secrecy. But just don't expect all of the answers at, 10.01 on Friday, but expect quite a lot of the answers in the days that follow because this next step has to have the Glazers show their hand. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and uh, Ben, I know you got to go. Um, I appreciate your time, your 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 wisdom and your knowledge. Um, and hopefully we can speak soon, maybe after the process has happened. But I appreciate your time and thank you very much, Ben. Absolute pleasure. Good luck to Manchester United tonight as well. We've been speaking so much about the sale that I think people forget about the football, a big game yeah. against Spurs. So yeah. let's hope Manchester United can clinch Champions League football. And when we know more from Friday onwards about the sale process, I'll certainly update you. Absolutely. Thank you, Ben. Thank you for your time. All the best. Thank you. Take care, Ben. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. There we go, people. There's Ben. Uh, I will carry on for a little bit more, people. That's a lot of information to take, man. It's a lot of information to take, people, man. I can't lie to you. That's a lot of information to take. Um, and ultimately, you know, we just have to wait and see. You know, this is going to take a while, people. It's not going to take straight away. It's not going to be a, a, a fast situation, a fast process. It will take its time, man. Um, we just got to hope, yeah, that the second, the scenario that he mentioned about, 
you know, him owning 50% and then giving the Glazers 20%. That cannot happen. Like that, I stress you, cannot happen. Because if that happens, we're screwed. Because at the end of the day, yes, they might not have a say in the football club, but they're just there, in it, And they, they may influence him. And you just don't want that at the football club. The whole point is that we want a full sale at the football club. We don't want the Glazers to stay. That's paramount. And Jim Radkin has, all, has led us to all the belief that, you know what, yeah, I want Manchester United. I want Manchester in Manchester United. He's gave us this feeling that, oh, I'm from Failsworth. I'm this and that. And I, you know, I love Manchester United. Well, you don't really, do you? Because now you're flirting with the Glazers. How dare you, man, flirt with the Glazers and tempt them to say, you know what? Well, I might want you to stay. Like, that's not what we wanted. You know? I, we knew he didn't have the money. We knew it. We knew it. He didn't have the money. So what does he go and do? He goes in, in the bed with the Glazers. And like I said to you, man, it is an option. It's not the entire option. He could come in and say, I want a full sale. But sometimes when you give that seed a doubt, that's where you kind of run with it after that, really. You know what I mean? Everybody's now run with that. And that's what he does. It makes you feel like, well... I'm not really sure, to be honest with you now. Whereas Sheikh Jassim has come out there and clearly said, I want a full sale. It's as simple as that, man. So it's going to be an interesting um, 24 hours. The next 24 hours will be key, man. Like, literally, like, May United, after that, he did say as well, after that, it won't be finished 10 p.m. deadline. It won't be finished after that. There will be a new due diligence. I just want it to be sorted ASAP. Like, this cannot drag on. The summer is around the corner, man. This cannot drag on people, man. Um, we are done when this happens. Please do like the video, people. Like, apparently, we've not even hit 200 likes, man. I don't know, man. You know what I mean? A lot of what people are doing, but please like the video. Um, that will be very, very grateful. Get your questions in. If you have any questions, if you have anything to say, let me know, man. But it's it's one of them, man. The, the protest is on Sunday. The protest is on Sunday. Like I said to you, if, they don't, if we don't hear no positive news, the protest could be ugly, man. And like I said, I don't know why they want that. Just get it over the line, get out of the football club, take your money and, and, and see you later. Don't ever come back. Don't ever come back, man. You know what I'm saying to you? So it's for me, it's, it's, it's one of them. When I heard it last night, before the City game as well, I just said to myself, you absolutely like, to put that out there before a big game, he knew everybody's on social media. He knew what he was doing. He wanted to put that story in there, throw it out there. Everybody panics. It creates a bit of scaremongering. It creates a bit of drama. And ultimately, the Glazers are laughing. They're, they're, they're laughing. Because now, they have a bit of hope that they can stay with doing a little bit of, um, you know, with having a little bit of money. That if they do, they get that 20%, which he did mention, uh, Ben Jacobs. That money later on is so much more. That's how greedy these lot are, man. Whereas, if they take a full sale, but they're not really happy with it, they could be like, oh, we've kind of fallen short here. So let's take this 20% and then later on, it could be worth X amount, if you know what I mean. So it's mad, it's mad. Uh, the man who hosts your enemy to keep me in captivity is enemy and must be mistreated as an enemy. Wow, that's powerful. That's powerful, man. That's absolutely powerful. Uh, smash don't like people, yeah, man. Uh, I'm a new shoot. Yeah, we're doing that 1.30. I think 1.30, I think it is. So yeah, we'll be there, man. We'll be there. Make sure you tune in, people. Um, Jim Radcliffe says, deceived. All the United fans, shameful. Yeah, absolutely. But this is what I'm trying to say to you. From day one, I just thought to myself, he's, you know what he's doing? He's coming here. He's trying to he's trying to go at the local fans. And all the local fans were coming at me saying, oh, Saeed, you're negative. You're toxic. You know, why do you want a, a, a state-funded, you know what I mean, Arab? Like, wh why are you doing that for? They don't even do their research. They just have this kind of, whatever the media tell them, they believe. They were like, oh, but we want a guy who gets the football club. Well, does he get the football club now? Does he, does he get the football club now, does he? You know what I mean? Because now he's trying to make um, a situation with the Glazers. So now does he does he get the football club? Yeah, man, that's what I'm saying, man. These guys, they always like to claim to know more than it's like. What they do is, yeah, these top brands, they, they, they take this elitist fan base, this elitist mentality, and they run with it. They don't explore every option. They just take it as, yeah, he gets United. No, he doesn't get United. Like, he doesn't. He clearly doesn't. So stop this nonsense, man. Um, I'm not. I'm not really kind of like um, worried about the Glazers staying. That's not my uh, my point. My point is um, is whether Jim Radcliffe if they take that offer, if they take the offer and they see that offer as a as a better offer, then that's where the worry is for me. If they see that offer as a better offer, that's where the worry is for me because that's where I'm like, 
that's where it becomes greed, isn't it? You know what I'm saying to you? Whereas if they say, you know what, we'll take Jasim's offer, but I don't know how much he's going to put out. Now I'm hearing that the offer here, big up to Zishan, uh, he's saying here, he's saying Qatari represents his set to fly into UK over the next days, weeks, in, in a view to finalise a deal to buy Manchester United Football Club. A deal worth more than 5.5 billion. Like, what more do you want? Like, what more do you want? You've got the 4.5 billion, 5.5 billion there. Like, what more do you want, man? But there is a big family. It is a big family. They all want 1 billion each. And this is why they'd rather stay with that 20% and then later on cash in on that when it's when it's a larger amount. You know what I'm saying to you? So, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's not easy, man. It's not easy. I can't lie to you. It ain't easy. Um... It's only worth it if the club's family is still buying into shit plus going to matches. Well, there you go, man. Like I said to you, I remember last time, MTO Trafford, people didn't want to do it, innit? And I didn't, but people didn't want to do it. I don't get the idea of, of staying outside the stadium for 18 minutes and then going in. You're, you're basically going in. Like, I get the protests, but if you're going to boycott, you have to fully boycott. I'm with that idea. If you're going to fully boycott, I'm fully with you. But staying out for 18 minutes, what... what? What is what, what? 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 You've gone into the stadium. What difference does it make? Like literally, what difference does it make? I just don't understand it. Um, boycott, boycott, boycott. United fans. Just me. Just this spot six billion. Now. But you know, does he though? Does he really? When when uh, Jim Ratcliffe isn't putting that money up, so why should he put that six billion up? You know, I don't think this guy has got five point five billion. I think he's bluffing. You know that. You know that game. What was that game called? Yeah. Where you do split or steal? Was it golden balls? Like this guy, <laughs> he's the guy that plays the golden balls. Yeah, that's that, that's that's Sheikh Jazim, bro. Like he doesn't have the money. He's gonna bluff you, bluff you, bluff you. Get to the final and steal all your money. You know what I mean? That's just, that's what you're doing. Um, he did mention there's other people involved as well, which again we don't know what's gonna happen with that one. Um, hopefully they're gonna be people who have a have a sounded interest. But I don't know, man. I just think for me, it's Jasim only. That's all we care about. Jasim, Jasim, Jasim. That's what all it should be. Like, he has the money. He could do everything. He will have unlimited funds. And that's all it is. But again, if tomorrow there's a feeling that he does pull out or does say, you know what, I've had enough of this cat and mouse games, that's the worry for me. Not that I think it will happen, but you do, you've got to take every possibility now as a real possibility. You really do. Every possibility can happen, people. So everything that we're saying, that, oh, yeah, well, the deadline is this, the deadline is that, this will happen. But like, anything can happen, man. This is the glazes we're dealing with now. These are guys who are greedy. They don't care about you. They don't care about the norm. They don't care about what makes sense to you. It's what makes sense to their pockets, man. And that's the ultimate reality, people. That is the ultimate reality. Um, six billion... And keep the change. <laughs> United is worth 3.7 billion and they're getting over 5.5 billion when they only spent 300 million and put 400 million in debt when they bought the club in 2005. Uh, if I was with I'd be taking this and laughing to the bank. I know, but you know what it is, man? It's because they know the club should be worth more than that. Because we haven't been winning trophies, because the, the club is run as a shit show, it should be worth more than that. And it will be worth more than that later on. They just, they just want to take every ounce of that, of what it's worth later on. They want to take it. Like, if United start winning trophies, it's, 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 it could be anything. It literally could be anything. Because of the global fan base, because of the global reach and the, the, the hype around my United, it could go far. And obviously, these guys right now are saying, you know what, we want to be part of that in any way, shape or form. So if they do take that 20%, then they, they're laughing, really. They're laughing. Because later on, when the football club is winning stuff, and Jim Rackett does end up putting money into my United. They can say, well, we, we can take this much now and we'll be gone. So, yeah, man, it's greedy and they want more. It's as simple as that. Uh, Sheikh Jazeem probably going to take or leave it deal. Yeah, well, there you go. This is what I'm saying. It's take it or leave it tomorrow. Deal or no deal. <laughs> Remember that game? Deal or no deal. Like, take the offer and take it where the sun don't shine. It's as simple as that. Um, Big up to Jessica. What's Jessica saying? He said, if the Glazers stay, the protest will get out of control. That's what I'm saying. I don't know why. I don't know why, yeah. I don't know why they would even think of that Like, They think it's toxic right now. For the players as well. This is what I'm saying. That's why it's so greedy. Like, they're doing it when the players, man. The players know 
the players know what's going on. The players know what's happening. What's this here now? Yeah, the train strikes, by the way. There's going to be train strikes. Crazy. But the Glazers know what the fan base is. The Glazers know that they they love the manager. But they know it. They're going to play on it. They're going to play on it, man. Ten Hag. I feel sorry for Ten Hag, mate. Because if he doesn't get his silence in, boy, it could be peak next season, man. Because you can't be getting more out of these lot. You can't. You simply can't. And I want. I don't want investment. I want the Glazers gone. Forget about the investment. We've got the investment and the owner in one. We don't need an owner with investment. We don't need that. We are not FSG. We're not doing all that nonsense. We're not doing it. Sorry. Uh, remember I told you at the start of the season? Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did, mate. You did. It's not being sold is what I see. They tried getting mad money and it backfired. Um, we don't need distractions. You're right. You know what I'm saying? I think for me, ultimately, it comes down to greed, innit? Tomorrow we'll find out whether this greed has gone more or less in it. Like that's that's what we're gonna find out. If they want more or they want less. But tomorrow is a deadline. That's one thing that he did stress. There's no more cut corners. They know they have to put in their final bids in. Tomorrow you put your final bids in, and that is it. There's no going back. But if the Glazers do accept that 50% stake, and then obviously you've got the 30 20% for the Glazers, if they do do that. That's where it's game over. And then we got nothing to say about it. And then we have to protest about Jim Radcliffe. <laughs> then we have to protest about Jim Radcliffe and the Glazers, both of them, at the football club. It's not easy, man. It ain't easy. But everyone's trying to block the Qataris, of course, man. Of course. Because they know it's game over. Do you know what I mean? To have these these uh, Qataris coming in, they think that they're going to, the, 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 what do you call it, their legacy is going to be destroyed on my United. This guy's a my United fan. He knows what's best for the football club. In Man City, have that feeling. You know, I mean, Man City came in. Look how successful they are. Yes, it's through money, but look how successful they are. You know what I mean? Like money does solve things, man. Whether you like it, we can be built on tradition, but also have the money there. And Jasim will do that. So it's mad. Uh, pray to God, everyone release us from the misery, bro. That's it, man. Tomorrow, ten p.m. We'll find out, bro. We better. We've got to stick. We better can stick blazers then. No, <laughs> I don't think you know. I'm not lying to you. I don't really. I'm not really feeling that. <laughs> I'm not really feeling that. Nah, nah, not for me. That man, that's crazy. You can't be doing that, man. You can't be doing that. We they need to go, man. It's simple as that. We need them to go. No more of this. What if this and what if that? These guys have got to go. It's as simple as that. Um, build a new Old Trafford. Yeah, there's so many things that we're gonna do though. There's so many things that we, we're capable of doing. We've got to build a lot of things. We've got to build a lot of things, man. And this is what we're going to do. We need, we need to be quick. Everything needs to be quick. Quick, quick, quick. Uh, Zayn Miasi here saying, we will rise from the ashes. Second best, no shame. You man are done, man. Arsenal fans, listen, get out of here, man. Get out of here. Uh, it's like a puppet show for the Glazers pulling the United fans on strings. Well, they've been doing it for the past 18 years, isn't it? No, this is no different. They've been doing it for the past 17 years, and we've been lapping it up. You know what I mean? We've not, we've not been, we've not been active. Now we've been active recently, but listen, this is enough. Is enough. They need to go. They need to go. You know, two Middle Eastern clubs, only one city. I don't think it will happen. I don't know. Maybe it's getting blocked, man. Maybe they, I don't know. Maybe they, you know what I mean, I don't know, man. That would be crazy, though. Two Middle Eastern powerhouses in the Premier League in Manchester. Like, Manchester would be the city to be, man. Like, just imagine East Manchester right now is built nicely. Just imagine South Manchester and the areas around it, how much it's going to be built. Like, it's going to be mad, bro. It's going to be absolutely mad. Um, I'm just waiting for Lee to send me the, the link for his stream. He still hasn't sent me yet. Uh, so we'll go for a few minutes more. But any question, guys, any questions you've got, uh, please do like the video, man. I don't know why we don't have enough likes on the video. I'm just going to check how many how many likes we're currently on. We're currently on 178. That's pride poor, you know, man. 178 and there's over 450 of you in the chat. Come on, guys, man. Like the video. Mecca chance. Oh, my God. That's funny. That's funny. Uh, do you reckon fans invade the pitch? Call off Chelsea. To be fair, you can't really invade the pitch, you know. You can't really invade the pitch because they've got good... Um, 
good security around it. You have to go proper down, then jump over the barrier. It depends if everyone does it all at once. But to be fair to you, man, we've got a quite a, a older fan base, man. I think for me, it would get a very, very ugly. Uh, and to be honest, in the stadium, a lot of people are quite apathetic, man. They don't, there's a lot of apathy in the stadium, man. I don't think really people like properly care. When they go in the stadium, it's like you can sing songs, but I don't think people will go to the next level, if I'm being honest with you. Um, that's just my kind of feeling because at the end of the day if they would do that they would have said empty old traffic nobody would come to the stadium but the people will always want to come to the stadium yeah fan yeah man yeah, fans get gas on a car cup <laughs> you're funny you're absolutely funny man but guys I'm going to wrap it up here man because I've got to go to league on a stream but please like the video people man like the video man honestly guys if you could do one thing you don't even have to send a super chat you don't have to do anything all you have to do is like the video so please like the video. Come on, man. 400. We should be at least 250 likes. So if you're watching right now, hit the like button. Uh, I'll be back later on. Uh, I am now. I am now. But he hasn't sent me the link. He hasn't sent me the link. So that's why I've been waiting. But yeah, guys, like the video. And, and like I said to you, I'll see you for the watch along tonight. Uh, 7.15. Yeah, 7.15, I'll be back live. So I'll see you there, people. Love, my Peace.